You're listening to The Awesome Podcast, where we celebrate the achievement and lessons of women-owned food and beverage manufacturing companies in Canada. You're tuning into our sessions with Kelly Wall, who owns Alternate Root Coffee. I'm Kelly Wall. I'm the co-owner and co-founder of Alternate Root Coffee Co. So we're a coffee roastery based out of Leduc, Alberta. Actually, our new shop is actually just on Edmonton International Airport property. We roast coffee fresh every week and we retail it directly through us, but also to cafes, grocery stores, restaurants, and other small shops. We don't add any additives to our coffee. We don't do flavored coffee. Um, Everything's natural, but there is just one ingredient. But I think for us, it's education around the product, like where it comes from, the farmers, the producers, the importers. We direct source or almost direct source almost all of our coffee. We can source back and we can show people the route that we took to get our coffee. We, We talk to our farmers. We visit with our farmers. Well, right now we're doing Zoom tours of the farm with our farmers because we can't obviously get there. And then just cough, like education, so the history, but also just around the tasting and, and the brewing and stuff like that. Like our route is not to do the whole cafe thing. It's, it's the production of coffee and, and bringing a product that was sustainably sourced and tastes good. So it's the world of specialty coffee. Um, and then just educating people. Like how do, you, how do you make this coffee so it tastes the best? How can you make it at home? We have a tasting room in the front of our coffee roastery. So... We're launching events starting this month, just all around coffee education and and growing our business so people can appreciate, you know, what what coffee is, not just like large scale commodity coffee, but, you know, the world of specialty coffee. We are also seeing, obviously, um, shipping delays, getting, obviously, coffee is not grown in Canada. (laughs) Um, It's grown along the equator, basically around the whole world. So... Yeah, we've had products sitting at the border for months. Our most of our shipments are four or five months behind. Um, so that's one challenge. We work with a lot of the same farmers year after year. But how do you project like your growth and how do you order enough coffee to sustain you till the next crop? Brazil this year saw a huge impact on their crops. They have very little coffee. They're the biggest exporter of coffee in the world. And they had a I think it was drought down there or bugs, like you, we don't know, right? So we could have coffees booked, so we book a year in advance, but if they get bugs or a flood or a drought or just poor growing conditions, we might only get half of that shipment. And then what do we do? What do we do with the rest? Like, where do we get the rest? We have a lot of companies that are relying on similar coffees year after year. So just pivoting, I guess, and figuring out how to bridge that gap when we get to it. I would think one of my most successful traits would be my ability to multitask and just take on various aspects of the business. I think everybody knows when you start a business, you're you're every role. So you're the bookkeeper, you're the sales rep, you're the fulfillment and order person, you're the sourcing person. So just the ability to take on all those jobs semi well, I guess. <laughs> um, we've since like outsourced a lot of those jobs, but in the beginning, especially um, just doing everything and having good organization skills. Every Monday morning, we sit down, me and my partner, and go through what was done last week and what needs to be done this week. And it's just a Monday morning ritual, 8 a.m. every Monday, and we write it out. And at the end of the week, we go through what did and what didn't get done and just reprioritize. Be kind to everyone, including yourself. It was kind of one of the things that um, came out of COVID for us. Small businesses everywhere were were hurting at the beginning or or confused and didn't know which which way to go. And I think everybody had to pivot. And in a lot of cases, it worked out better for a lot of companies. Now we can do online stuff that we couldn't do before, or people can work from home or whatever it might be. And it, it made people, I think, have to think and challenge themselves a little bit more on how to pivot. And I think that keeps you growing as a business, keeps you on your toes. But yeah, one door closed and uh, two or three more opened, I think is a good way to look at it. Um, We ended up hiring a consultant to help us work through like the hiring process this year because we couldn't take it on ourselves. We just had too much going on. I think that falls under delegating and wearing hats. And it was just one of the things we couldn't take on and do well if we did take on. So yeah, just outsourcing, you know, where where you need to. And, and recognizing that 
you can't do it all. Ask questions and find yourself a really good support group to help keep you going. You know, ask other people that are already doing something similar. Everyone's like, oh, I can't ask these people. Like, they won't share their information. I, I think that's wrong. Like, we're all about helping each other as a community. Like, find yourself a community that will support you and help you, whether it be a business coach or a mentor or a group like Awesome. Just find yourself a really good support group and ask the questions, do the research, and you'll figure out where you're going, where you want to go, and you'll be able to get there for sure. Thank you for listening to the awesome podcast where we celebrate the achievement and lessons of women-owned food and beverage manufacturing companies in Canada. Learn more about our community at beawesome.ca.